Hey everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an overview as well as some benchmarks on this new SSD from SanDisk. This is the SanDisk Extreme 2. I have the 240 gig version right here. It's also available in 120 and 480 gig gigabyte capacities. We'll start off with a quick unboxing. This is of course the Extreme 2 SSD which means it's a solid state drive uh, which provides much faster response times as well as uh, much uh, greater durability as far as impact uh, than a typical mechanical hard drive. Uh, this is a 2.5 inch drive so it should fit in most modern co uh, computer cases um, but you might need a bracket if you do want to install it in a 3.5 inch bay. It's a SATA 6 gigabits per second uh, interface so uh, make sure that you're going to connect this to a newer motherboard with a SATA 6 gigabits per second uh, bus. Uh, it's also known as SATA Revision 3 and uh, if you don't connect it to that it will still work on SATA Revision 2, uh, 3 gigabits per second for example, but that will severely limit the uh, performance that this drive is actually capable of. In the back here we have some uh, technical information, uh, some specifics from SanDisk. I'm, I'm going to be getting into these in just a second, but that's about all we'll look at as far as the retail box itself. Inside we have a pretty simple set of, uh, of accessories that's included. Of course you do get uh, your installation guide and warranty from SanDisk. Let me check just a moment and tell you guys how long this warranty actually is. Ah, it's five year. Five year warranty from SanDisk. Uh, so they're standing behind this product. You also get a spacer here and this is going to help uh, install this drive into uh, certain laptops for example that might uh, have a, a, a fatter uh, drive installation area. Uh, this drive for example is seven millimeters in height. You can drop this spacer on like so on the top or the bottom. Uh, it will simply uh, be held in place with some adhesive and that will give you a little bit uh, more sturdy installation. Looking at the drive itself, we can see the Extreme 2 labeling on the outside. SanDisk, of course, over on this side, we can see our serial ATA interface, standard SATA connector right there is for data, as well as power on the left. And then ooh, on the bottom, we have uh, the drive's uh, actual SKU, which is SSD, uh, well, I'm sorry, SD, SSD XP-240G, uh, as well as some of the uh, FCC logos and that sort of thing. I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this drive to talk a little bit more about the internals. Okay, so uh, this assembly of this drive is fairly simple. It uses Phillips head screws, but uh, I will point out this might void your warranty from SanDisk, so please don't do it unless you know what you're doing or don't care about your warranty because SanDisk is providing a very nice warranty for this drive. Apart from that, it's a plastic housing. Um, it's very lightweight, I should say. And here we can see the actual board with all of our uh, dirty bits connected to it. All right, um, now first off, when you're looking at, a, at, a, at an SSD like this, uh, I will note that there are thermal pads, uh, so you will want to make sure if you do happen to disassemble yours, you keep those in place. Uh, there's one for the controller here, as well as all of the NAND flash, as well as the DRAM cache that we have right there. Um, a couple of them are still on there. I'm not going to try to remove them because I don't want to mess with them too much. Uh, the controller, however, first off, which uh, routes straight over there from your SATA interface, is the Marvell 88SS9187. Uh, it's, which is Marvell's newest controller. Uh, its code name is Monet. It's an eight channel controller and this 240 gig model actually has eight NAND chips right there. Uh, the 120 gig version, you'll note uh, if, you, if you check out the uh, benchmarks for that, they're uh, a little bit less and that's simply because it's using uh, less NAND chips so it doesn't have quite, as, uh, quite the ability to address all of them at the same time like you get with the 240 gig version. Uh, apart from that, the, from the controller, you have a DRAM cache right there. That's 256 megabytes uh, for this one, 128 megabytes for the uh, 120 gig version, and uh, 512 megabytes for the uh, 480 gig version. Uh, the DRAM cache right there is volatile. That means that it's only going to be in operation while the drive is on, and then all of your permanent storage is handled by the NAND chips, which are over here. Those NAND chips, speaking of which, are made by SanDisk, they're SanDisk 19 nanometer toggle NAND chips. They're MLC, that's two bits per cell, uh, or multi-level cell NAND, uh, and they are capable of 3,000 program array cycles. And um, if you guys are ever concerned about program array cycles when it comes to NAND, I would suggest don't be, because you would really have to write an absurd amount of data to the drive to actually wear out your NAND. And if you do wear out the NAND, even then, it only becomes steady state, which means you can still read from it and access your data. So. Um, 
program array cycles, in my experience, are not really that big of a deal. Uh, but there is sort of a cool feature of this drive, uh, which they, which Sandisk is calling NCache. It's a little bit difficult to show you right here looking at the board, so I'm going to jump over to a quick screenshot to give you guys a better example of how this drive actually writes data. So here's a quick explanation of NCache, and before I jump into this, I want to point out uh, this drive, of course, also supports all the other features you would expect in an SSD, such as trim, uh, SATA 6, of course, uh, native command queuing, all that good stuff. If it even, even, if it even supports thermal throttling, which um, SSDs, to my experience, don't get that hot, but if this one does get hot enough, it will actually uh, throttle down. And that's kind of a cool feature. But uh, on to NCache, right? So uh, here you have an example of your, of your host. So this would be coming typically from your motherboard, uh, possibly from your chipset or wherever you have your SATA 6 gigabits per second drive connected to. From there, you have your controller, and that's going to be, again, your Marvell 88SS9187 Monet. Uh, from there, you have your DRAM. So the controller is going to immediately, quickly write um, the, your data to uh, your volatile memory there in your DRAM cache. And then from there, it can reach out to your actual NAND storage. Um, this drive inserts the end cache in between there. And end cache, uh, basically, it's there to help with the typical reads and writes that you get um, with typical day-to-day -day computer use. And that would be 4K access blocks. If you guys have watched any of my uh, SSD videos before, you might have heard me talk about 4K reads and writes being typically more important than the larger and uh, more impressive numbers that you see with sequential reads and writes. That's because with day-to-day -day computer use, that's what it very often has. However, when the, uh, when the, when the data is actually stored in the NAND, uh, it's typically uh, configured with a physical block structure which is greater than one megabyte. So 4K to one megabyte, uh, there's a lot of extra space in there. So rather than taking those 4K blocks and writing them straight to the, the main NAND storage, you have an SLC cache, that's single level cell, that's going to be much faster. It's going to accumulate those there, uh, and then once it has enough, it will actually write it to your main NAND, main NAND storage. So sort of a, a newer way, at least than, than what I have seen before, of uh, accumulating data and then writing it to your main storage. And uh, as you might see in the benchmarks coming up right now, um, it's actually quite effective. This drive has been posting some very impressive numbers. Um, in fact, I feel like this drives and a lot of the fastest SSDs right now are being more limited by the SATA interface than they are by the actual technology that's involved. Uh, but let's start off with some benchmarks. This is AS SSD. Uh, you can download it and run it yourself if you're interested. And uh, what we're seeing here is the same test on both sides. We're seeing megabytes per second on the left. We're seeing input-output operations per second on the right. Oh, I should also mention right here that we're running this on a Core i5-3570K uh, with a Z77 motherboard, um, and we're connected to the native Intel controller on that. Uh, but for reads and writes over here, sequential, we have 511 megabytes per second. For writes, 480 megabytes per second. Uh, there's your 4K numbers as well and 4K 64-threaded numbers, and that translates over here into some very high input-output operations per second, about 90,000 on the reads here, and about 71, just, to, just shy of 72,000 on the writes. Um, you'll also notice access time over there on the left, and this is one of the huge benefits that SSDs have over mechanical drives. Uh, 0 0.04 and 0 0.03 milliseconds for reads and writes, pretty, quite fast. Very, very extremely fast. Overall score here uh, for AS SSD was 1,099. We also have a couple extra tests uh, with AS SSD. We have a compression benchmark, for example. This controller, the Marvell controller on this drive, does not do on-the-fly compression, so you'll notice pretty steady numbers depending on the level of compression that you're working with. Um, it achieved, again, about 520 megabytes per second and about 485 megabytes per second, respectively, for reads and writes. We also have a uh, copy benchmark, and this is just copying data, um, emulating a few different types of typical computing activities, such as an ISO program and game. There's your scores for those, 350, 207, and 270. And uh, let's move on to Atto. Now, if you ever get an SSD and you look at the box, and the box says, this SSD can achieve 500 and whatever megabytes per second reads and writes, Chances are that that uh, drive manufacturer was using Addo to use that. So this is going to test the SSD using a bunch of different transfer sizes from about half a kilobyte all the way up to about 8 megabytes. And uh, you can see sort of the uh, numbers increasing down here at the bottom as, the, uh, as we get to higher and higher transfer sizes. Uh, but we can see the drive achieving some really high performance here, about 520, 522 megabytes per second on the writes and about 550, ooh, we got 554 right there, which is actually a good five megabytes per second 
beyond what SanDisk, SanDisk has stated for this drive. So really impressive numbers right there. And um, I mentioned that uh, manufacturers often use this test. They usually run it at Q depth of 10. What we looked at before was Q depth 4. Q depth 10 just gives the drive more to work with. It's, it's sort of synthesizing a really, really extreme workload that chances are you'd never see with day-to-day -day computer, computer usage, but it does allow the drive again to achieve um, some really impressive performance. Although, strangely enough, on this one, we only hit 546 megabytes per second on the QDEP 10, whereas QDEP 4, we hit 554 right there. Interesting. Not sure how to explain that, but there it is. OK, next up, we have Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. Uh, this is a disk speed test that's provided by Blackmagic. Since Blackmagic deals largely with uh, video, we have lots of different video um, resolutions here as well as color depths and this is going to test the drive and see if it's capable of uh, working with Blackmagic's hardware using uh, those different types of video. So we can see we have green check marks in the vast majority uh, except for some really high uh, or some really intense color depth uh, 1080p 50 frames per second and 1080p 60 frames per second um, but for the vast majority it's giving you the thumbs up. We hit 487.5 megabytes per second on the writes with that test and 522.1 with the reads. Finally, we have Crystal Disk Mark, and this has been a standby for us for quite some time. This is a similar test to uh, ASSSD. Um, I usually run it uh, in zero fill mode, which gives you compressible data, and I'll also run it in standard mode, which uses incompressible data. Again, this drive does not do compression on the fly, so the numbers are going to be very similar. But we can see all of our results right there, 537 and 502 uh, for the sequential reads and writes, um, 4K, 32, and 144.9. That's, that's actually pretty insane right there for the 4K uh, writes. We can see input-output operations per second reflected over here on the left as well. 92,000 and 76,000 for random read 4K, QDEP 32, and random write 4K, QDEP 32. Uh, again, I did also run this in uh, standard mode, which uses incompressible data. Again, the numbers were roughly the same, 92,000 and 76,000 IOPS, um, respectively, for those QDEP 32 4K tests, um, which, again, extremely impressive numbers. Uh, I guess that's just my... Uh, that's just my hardware sheet, so that's all the benchmarks. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been our overview, as well as some benchmarks on the new SanDisk Extreme 2 SSD, posting some very impressive numbers and some notable improvements over SanDisk's Extreme SSD series. Uh, if you guys are interested in some more information, I would encourage you to Google uh, SanDisk Extreme 2 reviews, because there's a lot, of them, a lot of them out there. A lot of them are very complimentary. Uh, but that's going to do it for this video. If you'd like to see, me, see more, of course, you can check out our Newegg TV YouTube channel. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and I'll see you in the next video.